Just wanted to follow up on some of the um, discussions that have been happening in question period um, regarding prolific offenders. One of the uh, suggestions by, uh, continuing suggestions by the opposition has been that the um, Crown Council needs to be directed to ask for detention of violent prolific offenders. And obviously it's for the courts to decide What's your uh, position on that? Uh, my position is that uh, violent offenders uh, should be kept in jail. Uh, this is not a controversial, controversial position. This is a position that is shared by British Columbians. And as the leader of the BC NDP, people will see me advocating with the federal government to make sure that the criminal code and that the federal laws correspond with what British Columbians want. Uh, it's important to know that our Crown prosecutors are applying that federal law, that criminal code, every day in court. Our opportunity as a province around serious issues of mental health and addiction that lead people to be in conflict with the criminal law that cause uh, people in communities to feel unsafe when they see somebody yelling in the middle of downtown uh, in clear distress. Um, this is our opportunity to increase public safety and also uh, to advocate uh, on those issues that, that belong to the federal government. I'm committed to addressing the core issues of public safety in our community, and so many of those are linked to mental health, addiction, and homelessness, and not just for the broader community, but also for the people that are struggling in our streets. A follow-up? Ah, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, yes, uh, I understand that uh, you'll want to go to the federal government and continue pressing for changes to criminal code, but what about, um, are you supportive of um, making a policy or directive change uh, from the Attorney General provincially that, um, that sort of presses Crown Council to at least ask for the detention of prolific, violent prolific offenders? So uh, one of the challenges uh, that we face is we can't direct Crown Council to uh, violate federal criminal law. This is a challenge that was identified in the Lepard Butler report, uh, the government commissioned, around this issue. The challenge is, what is available to us as a province? What can we do to make communities safer? I've spent this whole event talking about how important it is we deliver in a way that is visible and real for families. I mean, the distress in our streets, the concerns of seniors and families and people who don't feel safe in their downtowns as a result, uh, the issue of violent attacks, these are priorities for government. We must address them. We have a roadmap of how to do that through this important work that was done by a former police chief, by an expert in mental health and corrections, and uh, British Columbians will see us prioritizing that issue. Absolutely. Excuse me, the head of the BC Prosecution Service um, was interviewed by Lepard Butler, and he gave a quick run through of the situation. That, just to boil it down briefly, he says people offend, they only get charged the most serious offenses. They're, they re-offend, they're released, uh, they get plea deals, they won't get federal time, do a few months. When they get out, the cycle continues. Uh, open quote, we can't deal with the problem, close quote. And to me, that's um, the three words that describe that whole paragraph from the prosecution service is catch and release. Do you take offense at the term catch and release like the Oregon government has for the last several months in the legislature? It seems to me a, to be a perfectly apt description confirmed by the prosecution service itself. You know, I, Les, when, when I started working in the downtown east side, I saw this. You know, I saw people, and it was, by the way, under a BC Liberal government. I saw people who would get arrested for an offense. They would go to jail. They would spend a couple weeks in jail. They would come out. They weren't better. Oftentimes, they were in a worse state than when they went into jail in the first place. And they would repeat the cycle again and again and again. And this is why um, the solutions are challenging. The solutions involve profound interventions in this moment when someone is in that cycle of offending. It's around identifying those folks, figuring out why they're continually in and out of jail, and intervening to stop that cycle. And uh, 
you know, I've, I've seen it firsthand. I know British Columbians have seen it on the news. And uh, we can address this issue. Um, but we can't address it by playing political games about it. Uh, we need to actually confront what the issue is, uh, which is intervening in a meaningful way that's going to stop that cycle. Do you have a follow-up? There's some buzz going around the legislature that uh, the government, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the Oregon government or maybe your income, incoming government, is going to issue a directive to the prosecution service to take some unspecified steps to do with catch and release. Um, is, that, is that happening? Do you, are you aware of that? Les, there are no tools that are off the table to address this issue. You know, uh, British Columbians have seen in their communities, uh, they've seen on the news, uh, issues where our criminal justice system is not responding in the way that it needs to, to ensure public safety. So no tools are off the table. And the commitment that I'm making, setting down a marker today, this is a priority for our government. You will see action from our government on this issue. But what you will see is action that actually addresses the core issue that is causing so much chaos in communities. It's the issues of mental health, addiction, homelessness, and the need to intervene and break the cycle that people are involved in uh, that is causing distress for business owners, for communities, and I'm looking forward to getting to work on that.